This is the Motorola Moto S30 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you want to further support the channel, you can click on the super thanks button below and leave me a super thanks comment. Links for tools and parts will also be in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Here's a better look at the SIM tray. Heat needs to be applied to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. Now this phone has a terrible design. After spending a lot of time trying to pry this camera bezel off, I realized there's a screw underneath holding this bezel down. Usually the bezel is only held down with some adhesive. So in order to take that off, you're going to have to peel this bottom portion off. Now there's a T4 or Torx 4 screw that has to be removed. And then the camera bezel can be pried off. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. Here's a look at the other side. There are 16 more Phillips screws which need to be removed. The top cover can now be removed. There are some antenna lines on this plastic cover which are the light gray color lines and the NFC antenna is located on the top center. There's also graphite film to help transfer heat. Here's a look at the other side. There's another layer of graphite film which can be peeled off and removed. At this point the battery cables can be disconnected from the main board. Now the rest of the cables can be disconnected. There are two coaxial cables on the bottom right side of the board that need to be disconnected by popping them off. There's also copper tape covering the front facing camera connector that needs to be peeled off so we can disconnect and remove it. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. The main board can now be lifted up and removed. On the main board, there's a 32 megapixel main camera, a 13 megapixel ultra wide, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. There's a secondary microphone on the top corner, some copper tape over the front shields, and the camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see a lot of thermal paste on top of these chips and resistors. The proximity sensor is located on the other side of the board, as well as a liquid damage indicator sticker, which is the white sticker over here. There's some more copper tape and graphite film on the back shields, as well as some thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see more thermal paste on top of the RAM and processor, as well as these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. The bottom plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. There's an antenna line drawn on this plastic cover as well, and the vibrator motor is located on the other side. There's some more graphite film on the bottom which needs to be peeled off. And then these two flex cables as well as this coaxial cable need to be disconnected from the subboard. This protective tape also needs to be peeled off. Now the fingerprint reader cable can be disconnected from the subboard. The fingerprint reader is held in place with some adhesive, so all I have to do is gently pry it off. Here's a better look at the fingerprint reader. The subboard cannot be lifted up and removed. The primary microphone is located underneath the shield, and there's a rubber gasket around the charger port. There's also a liquid damage indicator sticker on the charger port itself. Here's a look at the other side. 
Once the flex cable for the speaker is peeled off from the frame, the speaker can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at the speaker. The speaker also has those little white foam balls which make it sound larger than it actually is. The SIM reader is located here and it's held on some adhesive. There's also a small antenna board on the side of the frame which is connected to the coaxial cable. In order to remove the battery, there are no pull tabs provided to help us pry it off. So we are going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit there for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 4400 milliamp hour battery. Once the battery is removed, we can see this flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard, as well as the SIM reader over here. We can also see the flex cable for the screen which is routed through an opening in the mid frame. So if you need to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, remove the camera bezel and the screws on the top plastic cover as well as remove that cover itself. Disconnect the battery cables and remove the battery and then disconnect the flex cable for the screen. Heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath. Pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. If you need to replace the SIM reader, You'd also have to take pretty much everything apart to gain access to this flex cable so you could peel off the flex cable and remove that SIM reader. The flex cable for the power button and volume key is located here and there's a plastic bracket holding it inside the frame. In order to remove that you'd have to peel off the flex cable and remove this plastic bracket and then you'd be able to lift it up and remove it out of the frame. The earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held on with some adhesive. Once the flex cables are peeled back we have a better look at the copper vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4.5 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.